Hello everyone, welcome to Cabbage Patch Soap. My name is Laura and today we are making an oatmeal milk and honey soap that was requested and we will be cutting the seaweed soap and we will be discussing lip balms and I have an unboxing to do. So what I'm going to do real quick is just get my chats working properly, make sure I can see what you guys are posting and straightening out the camera because it looks like it looks like it's a little bit crooked all right let's see here all right let's just see if i can adjust this a little bit making sure it's on uh, the camera not the table that's crooked hey stacy welcome okay well that's about as good as it's gonna get for now okay All right, there we go. Hi, Beating Crazy, welcome. I guess I can call you Francis instead of Beating Crazy. There we go. Okay, looks like the chats are working now. But I figure if I call you Beating Crazy, then people will be able to find your channel. Although, before I forget, because I typically do, um, go ahead, you guys, and put a note in the chat with your channels, um, social media, whatever you want to promote, so that people can find you and and follow you and support you. I am just arranging some of this because we have something to do before we cut this out. I'm hoping this will all fit uh, in frame. We'll find out here. Okay, I got a box da, 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 da. in the mail. I took the tape off so I could get the labels off. We're gonna see what's in it. Oh, thank you for linking the Stacy. So this box is from Stacy. We're gonna see what's inside. Okay, so first of all, we got these fun pillowy things. Okay, so it looks like there's two in here. This is the one with the glitter. Let me see what's in here. I have to take it out. Oh, it's so awesome looking. Okay, so... Oh, there's a straw. I don't want to lose a straw. Those are cute boxes, too, that they come in. That's awesome. So Stacy makes these on her channel, you guys. You have to go and follow her. Look how beautiful this is. So this definitely is even prettier in person. It was. It looked awesome on the video, but when you get to see it up close, it's so pretty. You've got, like, the blue to silver and the pretty glitters on top. It's so pretty. And it's got a little cap here and the straw. And it glows in the dark, but I don't know. I don't know if I can get this to show up. Yeah, she says that one glows in the dark. I'm going to try holding it up to the light for a second. And then turning the lights off. We'll see if we can get it to glow. Okay. Okay. I don't think it's showing up on the camera, but it's definitely glowing. Let me try again. Need to give this another second. Uh oh, is my camera losing its mind? Yeah, there it goes. Okay, let's try now. Okay, I can see the glow, but I just don't think the camera is able to pick it up. Ah, shucks. My camera is a pain. Maybe what I'll do is leave this in a bright spot, and then at the end, oh, there's something inside. At the end of the uh, video, maybe we'll check the glow again. Oh, cool. It has instructions inside. So she gives you instructions so that you don't ruin it. Awesome. Thank you. This is so pretty. Yeah, maybe let it sit in the light for a while. I'm going to do that. Because I'm pretty sure. Because like I said, I can see the glow. I think the camera is just being a butt. Okay, this is another one that she made. It's so pretty. This one looks like a galaxy or something. It looks really awesome. 
gonna take this out. I don't want to lose the straw. I'm gonna set this over here so I don't drop it. Look how pretty, you guys. Look how beautiful those colors go together. And this one has glitter too. It looks like stars. So this looks like either this like something in outer space or like maybe like different color jellyfish on the ocean. It's really, really pretty. And it has the lid also. Thank you so much, Stacey. These are amazing. Even the bottom is pretty. Look at that. You guys should definitely check out her channel. And um, she's got a channel now and Instagram. And she shows you little videos of the ones that she's made and pictures. And there's also videos of her cat, which is important. We're all about videos of the cat, for sure. Okay, I'm going to set this one aside. And then the we move the box. And then this one, I'm going to put, I'm going to find a light to set it under. Because I don't want to accidentally get soap batter on it. And then we will try it. Let's see, let's see. Ah, let's see. This is a nice, there's a light over here. This is a nice spot. Okay. Just hope it stays put. <laughs> she has a video of it on her, um, on her channel and you can see the glow really good on that, on that video. And I have a black light somewhere. So if all else fails, I'll get the black light. I don't have a whole bunch of lights on right now because I have the lights on for this camera. And, um, so the house isn't very bright right at the moment, but because the, the lights in here are really yellow and they make the colors for the soap look kind of funny. So thank you so much, Stacey. This is so awesome. Such beautiful, beautiful tumblers. I've never had a pretty one like that. So um, I will definitely treasure those forever. Just getting my gloves on real quick. Do you sign them? You have six others in different stages. Whoa. You should sign the bottoms if you don't sign them. Um, if you haven't started signing them yet. Just putting gloves on here, guys. Just a second. Yeah, we definitely need a signature in case you get famous someday or just so that, you know, because you're famous to us. Okay, so here is the seaweed soap. You can see it's got, um, it has darkened a little bit, which is what we expected. And it's got those cool wavy seaweedy looking designs on Tom. No, you haven't signed them. You tried on one and it looked awful. Oh, dear. We, maybe we could, um, maybe you could make like a signature, like get your signature and make it into a sticker, like a clear sticker and have the signature in whatever color you want and then put that on the bottom. And then it can be like, then it won't, you know, it won't cause problems for you. Oh, I forgot to get a mold for the new soap. Don't let me forget. Okay, so we're just going to peel back the mold. This feels really, really firm, which is good. Hi, Barb, welcome. We're about to cut the seaweed soap. Oh, and you know what else? We should talk about the lip balm. So it looks like on the poll, last time I checked it, looks like everybody was in favor of the... Um, uh, da, 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 vanilla, the French vanilla fragrance, or flavor, technically. Although, um, in the lip balm world, the flavor is actually a fragrance, and... It's confusing, I know. But I went ahead and made a few. Let me just show you real quick because I will forget otherwise. Um, get the soap off my hands. But this, uh, okay. So I made some in tubes. This is how I usually package them. They, they are in these uh, little lip balm tubes like this. Let me set this down. Uh, so they're just like a normal lip balm tube. This does not have a label on it yet or anything. And then on the inside, you can see... It's been filled with the lip balm. The other way I wanted to try 
is in these little tins. These are the same tins that I use for my solid perfume. But I know that some people prefer these for lip balms as well. So um, maybe we can do a poll later and you guys can tell me what you prefer. I will say that these tins, um, when I was filling them, <laughs> I cannot open these with gloves. Um, but uh, when I was filling them, it's, it seems like the tins hold about double the amount of lip balm. And the tins are also really expensive. So if I go the tin route, like I could, I could probably do both, like offer lip balm both ways. Um, but the tins will cost more because there's more product in them. And also because the tins themselves are more expensive. There we go. We got it open. So then you just like rub your finger in there and apply it to your lips. So that's what that looks like. And the tins are, um, well, actually, the tins and the tubes are reusable, but um, these are a little bit easier to reuse because you can do different things with them. You can turn them into uh, magnets or you can um, put something else in them, trinkets, like wash them out real good and turn them into trinkets, trinket tins. Uh, too bad you can't get plastic jars versus tins. I can, um, but they're even more expensive. So... The problem is the cuter the packaging, the the more it costs. Like some some of those little tiny like plastic containers are like two dollars just per container, and um, some of them they they sell them for less, but you have to buy the jar and the lid separately. And um, when I you know when I checked out the prices last time, um, it was so expensive that I was like, yeah, I'd have to sell these little tiny lip balms for like ten dollars just to make it worth my while. And I just didn't think anybody would be interested in that. Um, but I mean, even the tins might be that much, um, but the little plastic jars were so expensive, you know, it, it, I don't know why they were more money. I don't. Um, also the other problem with the plastic ones is it seems like there's a lot of different styles and they change. And so what would happen is I would have to keep changing like my photographs for them and everything. Whereas the tins always seem to stay the same and those little tubes always seem to stay the same. Um, I had trouble finding good plastic jars. Uh, plus I like to, if possible, if I can find recyclable stuff, I try to do that, which is why I go with the tins. Um, and I was also looking into glass jars and the glass jars, sometimes they're cheaper than the plastic ones, but at least then they'd be recyclable. So I don't know. Um, uh, but yeah, so, but yeah, I will definitely look into it now. Um, because a lot of that stuff I was looking at was around the time when, the supply chain stuff was really, really bad and things were more expensive. So it may be that they've dropped in price by now. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, the little plastic clear ones are cute too. They're just expensive. You vote tubes. Yep. Tubes. Tubes fit better in my purse and are not as heavy. This is true. They do fit better in your purse and in your pocket. And um, yeah, I have some like this one. This is one that didn't get filled all the way. And so I've been using it. The only problem with the tubes is they roll away if you drop them. That's the only downside. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut this before I distract myself too much. And there we go. Okay, let's see how it looks on the inside. Oh, cool. Okay, you see this dark edge? Normally what happens is... As the soap cures, that dark is going to creep in towards the center. This is a really good example. I think I've mentioned this before when I was showing you how, like, the outside edge was a little bit darker than the inside. And that's because of the vanilla and the fragrance. Uh, the, the vanilla will cause the fragrance to dark, turn dark brown like this. So this is what the soap actually looks like, like, if it didn't have vanilla. You have, like, this dark, um, like, tan green color. And now you got this really pretty, like perfectly edged dark brown going around the outside, but um, that's going to creep in and, and more than likely it'll turn all brown. That's usually what happens. It smells pretty good. Here's this one. So I like this fragrance. It's a light, um, kind of fruity and bright fragrance. And um, believe it or not, I can, I can smell the seaweed in this. So here's the last one. You know, this light fruity fragrance, and then, like, there's this bottom note of uh, something else, and it's the seaweed. But it smells really, really good. And as this cures, the flavor, or not flavor, sorry, the fragrances will start to mellow out a little bit. And 
kind of interested to see what it smells like later. But yeah, these should turn fully dark brown. And then here are the other two. But if it doesn't, then you'll have a really cool accidental design. It's always about food, <laughs> yes. Yeah, pie with crust on it. Yeah, perfectly square or perfectly square loaf of bread. Exactly. It's always the food. It's because we need food for so many things. Okay, I'm going to put this on the shelf. And if I forget anything, let me know. I had a bunch of stuff I was going to... That was on my mind for this video today that... It's very possible that I spaced something. I'm just putting this on the shelf real quick. I'm going to keep this where I can get to it easily. So if I see any dramatic changes for the next live, I can get to them easily. That's going to hang out next to the next to the pine tar soap. Okay. So this next soap, let me get a, another mold because let's see here. Okay, I did have one. Good. All right. So this next one. Oh, you know what? Let's uh, put away the slicer first. Oh, pie. Yes, Barb. Pie, pie would be good. It's like kind of like a pumpkin pie, like a square pumpkin pie with crust all the way around. I wonder if that's possible to make, like if you have like a little t like a little tin box or something and you somehow spread the crust on the inside on all sides perfectly. And then you pour the batter inside and bake it. I wonder if that would if that's a thing that can be done. That would be kind of cool. Oh, and we have the little individual bar we have to pop out of this mold. Let me just put this away real quick. soap crumbs. All right. Here's the individual bar. You're ready for pumpkin pie? Me too. Although I'm ready for pumpkin pie any day, any year. I mean, any time of year, although any year as well, I suppose. All right. So here is that seaweed individual bar. Um, you can kind of see like the light and dark patches on the bottom. And I'm interested to see if that goes completely dark. It'd be kind of cool if it does. Okay, that is on the shelf. And we'll get this. I'll tidy up that mold so we can use it. Okay, so for the uh, oatmeal, milk, and honey. Somehow this is getting more soap crumbs, this mold. Okay, there we go. Set that out of the way. Just set this aside. What are you saying here? Were you going to stay home for Thanksgiving, but then your mom called and asked you to show for her to her sister to your sister's house an hour and forty five minutes away? Wow. Well, if that's a good thing, hopefully you were you want to go. <laughs> that's a long drive. Always ready for pumpkin pie. Me too. Okay, so here are the oils. This is the basic oil mix that I always use. My um, has coconut oil in it, um, palm oil, castor oil, and olive oil. And then this is the lye water. It's a little darker because it has honey in it. And when you add the lye, it heats up and it caramelizes the honey a little bit. It looks really cool. And then, let's see, for you, not for Zooey, he has to say, home. oh, poor Zooey. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully you'll have a good time. All right, and then in here I've got the oatmeal. You can see how it's like powdery. 
And I also mixed in some powdered goat milk. So this soap will not be vegan because it has the powdered milk in it. I did that because I was out of almond milk. And I happened to have the powdered goat milk on hand, so I decided to use that. Okay. And um, there's nothing... It's the little pieces in there, or it's because the milk and the... Um, Oatmeal are kind of clumping together. It, there's no big pieces in there. It's all powder. All right. And then, so there's the milk, the oatmeal, the honey. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then, and then the bees. Let's see what you guys are saying real quick. You got out your Christmas tree. Oh, yeah. Nice. Before the ornaments go on it. So he's all happy now. Yes. Yeah. Cats really do like those trees. Good thing you won't have the ornaments on it when you're not there. All right. So here are the little bees. And the honeycomb. So this is going to go on top of the soap. Um, these are the little individual bees I made. They've got wings on them. And they will sit on top of the soap. And I think what we'll do with this honeycomb is... I want to be careful. That's why I got this here to slide it under here. I don't want to like break it or smash it. I had to make it twice because the first time it got stuck to the mold. And then it wouldn't release. Um, see how it's kind of breaking up a little bit. I want to avoid that. I don't want this to get too dry, but I may have to let this I'm trying to get some air underneath there by scraping it up from the paper. Um, we may have to leave this uncovered while I'm working so that it, it gets a little drier and stiffer. The bees look cute. Thank you. Hi, Patty. Welcome. Okay, so I'm just trying to just trying to loosen this up so that later on when we go to peel it off, hopefully it'll come off a little bit easier. Um, usually the soap dough doesn't stick to this paper like this, so I think some of the soap dough is a little bit soft, and I think that's why it's deciding to stay connected. But my plan is to put the little bees on there in the soap. And put this over, like, maybe, like a, like, a kind of lay it across, like, lay it across the mold here so that when we slice it, everybody gets a bee and a little bit of, a little bit of honeycomb. I thought that would be cute. Okay, it looks like it's sliding around just fine everywhere except for right here. Little bees are. Try not to mess with the bees. Okay, that's moving around. It's loose. All right. Hopefully we got crisis averted here. Uh, let's see. Just making sure it's flat because I don't want it sticking up in the soap mold. All right, so I'm going to set that there and hopefully nothing moves around. But you can see a lot of soap dough stuck to this because, like I said, that soap dough, for whatever reason, is a little on the soft side. Um, not Usually it's not a bad thing because it makes it easier to work with, but this time, I don't know. It just doesn't want to, it just wants to stick to everything. Okay, and then this is the Oatmeal Milk and Honey Fragrance. I really like this one. This one's by Crafter's Choice. Um, the only thing about it I don't like is, like I said, it turns the soap brown. So what we're going to do... Um, you love the bees, Patty? Thank you. Um, what I'm going to do is... And, and also to the honey, you know, turning brown. All those things are going to contribute to a darker soap. Um, I've got some white. Let me just shake it up here. i got the white in here. And what we'll do is... Um, after I mix everything into the soap, we'll set aside some like lighter color batter in here when this is empty and uh, we'll do kind of like a swirl or something just so that there's a pattern. It just won't be a very uh, like colorful pattern. And then just to make sure that the brown sort of turns brown evenly, I've got my um, uh, this brown, whoops, brown oxide here. Um, this is the brown oxide. I've got the little measuring spoon stuck down in there only need a tiny tiny bit of this but all this does is make it so that when it turns brown it kind of turns like an even color and it's not like blotchy or something so let me go and grab my spatula and my whisk in case i need them i'll probably need the spatula oh and let me give a stir like a little mixing yeah here we'll grab the little design tool also this one okay okay 
Let me put the face shield on real quick. And then once I mix everything, of course, we'll have to work pretty quick. Uh, one second. So I may not be able to respond. Also, honey tends to accelerate soap really bad. Um, it's just like sugar because, because probably of the sugars in it. Um, this soap might go from liquid to solid more quickly than some of my other soaps. So with that in mind, what I'm going to do is mix everything in first. Um, well, actually, except the fragrance. Let's do the fragrance. Well, having, I, I can't remember if this accelerates or not. Let's, let's risk it because, oh, it smells so good. This one, this one really smells good. This is, this is one of the, um, one of the few that I use from them still. They have a lot of good fragrances, but, um, they're a little bit more pricey than some of the other places that I get my fragrances from. So, but there's a couple, there's a couple fragrances they have that are really good. There's that one. And unless they've changed it, their uh, green apple, their green apple is like really ultra juicy and crisp. And there was something just special about that green apple that they, um, that they make. So, or I guess carry, I don't think they actually make it, but anyway. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll mix all this together first, then add the lye water to it. Then I'll separate it. I'll use um, this glass container to put the white and then we will try for a swirl and then we'll put the little embeds on top. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. I wanted to make sure we got all the lumps out. Any like milk or oatmeal that was clumping up, I, d I didn't want there to be clumps of that stuff in here. Just testing the fragrance level. It's pretty good. This smells really, really nice. It's like, it almost has like, um, like a bakery smell to it. Almost like it's, it's really vanilla forward. Um, and then you've got like the, the sweetness from the honey and maybe the, the, the bakery scent I'm smelling is the oatmeal. But it doesn't smell like it doesn't smell like vanilla cake or anything like that. It's hard to describe. It's def it's a very good fragrance though. I really like that one from them. Okay, let me go ahead and put in the lye water. I'm stalling because I'm looking at this honeycomb and I'm thinking when I go to put it on the mold, if it's too it's going to be too big and I'm going to have to trim it down. And I'm wondering if I shouldn't just trim it first, like before. Because if you see, like, what I'm thinking is draping it over the top. No, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. We'll do it that way. Because I don't want to... I don't want to mess up anything. I don't want to cut it and then have it be crooked or something. Okay. Um, oh, this one doesn't have my measurement marks on it. No, it does. It does. There they are. Okay. Never mind. They're just faint. All right. So... Let me go ahead and stop stalling here. We'll go ahead and put in the lye water. And this also has the sea salt dissolved in it, as well as the honey in place of the sugar. And, um, yeah. All right. Ooh, that looks really good. It's like, like coffee with milk in it or like a caramel. Wanda said to say hello, and she can't make it tonight. That's totally fine. I hope she's feeling better. I know she was having not such a good week from what you were saying. All right, let's mix the white first just because um, if, I need to, if I need to stick blend it, um, I don't want it to... What am I trying to say here? I don't want to mix the dark one first and then put it in here. 
All right, this is just going to lighten it up. This is not going to be like white, white. Okay, yeah, that's probably plenty. It's going to stay this like mocha y color, if that, or it'll be a light brown. Because, like I said, that vanilla will turn this, turn this brown. Um, and it's going to turn this brown, and just so that we have a better contrast, and like I said, to make sure it turns brown evenly, I'm going to be adding a little bit of this brown oxide. And oxides, just you just need like a tiny, like that and you'll be able to see a color difference. You do not need much. This this is like ultra strong, um, even compared to like Micah's. All right. All right. All right, so a little bit darker. I'm gonna try a little bit more. And this is what you wanna do. If you have any kind of oxide, you wanna add little tiny bits at a time until you get the color you want. You do not want to add a bunch because um, they're really hard to lighten as well. Like if, if I got this to a dark brown and decided I want it lighter, it would take a lot of white to get it to lighten up. Okay, okay there we go. Okay, so now hopefully you can tell there's like a big difference between this color and this one. And then it's going to continue to darken from that vanilla. Let me clean this up. You know what we could do? I wonder how fluid this is going to stay. Looks like it's fluid enough. <laughs> Let's do... Let's do a different pour. Um, this will come out completely different looking than what I was originally going to do, and I don't, I won't need the swirl tool. So what we'll do is first we pour a little bit of this in here. Oh, this got, this got stained from the stuff I was using. Um, as long as it stays fluid, we can do this. If it doesn't, we'll have to pour it. Looks like it's already thickening up, sadly. Oh well, we're gonna pour a little bit at a time. I think you guys have seen me do this with, um, I think I did this with one of the ombre soaps, I think the red one, and uh, that I made a long time ago. There was a couple other like colored soaps I did with this. And I'm just alternating, so it's gonna make these rings down at the bottom. And then I'm gonna pour it all into the mold. And there's different like pouring techniques you can do with this, but I'm just going to pour it straight in. And maybe like pour like in a circle or something, but I'm not going to do anything crazy. Okay. Let me get the last of this light color, light brown. Do, 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 do. I need my spatula. And then essentially, um, the color that you put in last is going to be what goes into the mold first. But because we're alternating the colors like this, it'll come out in kind of a sort of like a pattern. Okay, this is thickening up. I need to hurry. Probably, this is probably not hurrying. I should take my own advice. Okay. Anyway, hopefully you guys can see how I'm going to try to tilt this. The pattern down the side here, it's like a stripey kind of... Anyways, let's get this mold over here. I can't overfill this because otherwise when I put the honey in, it's going to... The honeycomb is going to look all weird. Making sure my lines... Okay. Like I said, they're really... These lines are really faint. I don't know. trying to get some of the marks off. I don't think I can. It's fine. All right, so I'm going to pour it in. I'm just going to kind of go around like this. And the different colors are going to come out alternating, kind of. Hopefully when we get to the... Um... Oh, look at that. Look how thick it got. Whoa. Yeah, I was kind of pretty close there. Um, anyways, hopefully when we cut it, there will be some sort of like a 
different looking pattern inside. There we go. Okay, I overfilled it. It's fine, right? It'll be fine. Okay. Let me see if I can see these lines that I keep erasing. I cannot. I think, well, there's one. I think I uh, cleaned them off. That's okay. First, let me get this out of here so that it doesn't solidify in the in the cup. And in this case, I don't really think it was the fragrance that accelerated. I think it was a combination of the honey and then the brown is thicker than the white. So I think all that stick blending just was a little bit too much for it. So if you decide to make soap and you want to use this particular fragrance, just and you want to use honey and everything, just make sure that you only stick blend as much as you need and then stop unless, unless you want really thick batter for some reason. I'm just getting the rest out of the other pots here so we don't waste any. Oh, it smells really good. This is one that just has sort of like a pleasant, comforting smell. I've always liked this one. Okay. It looks kind of cool on top. I think I'll just leave it. I was going to swirl it, but I think it looks cool just like that. All right. Now let's try... Let's try getting this honeycomb on there. So what I was thinking is I would just lay it on top like this. And then I could trim off the ends. But now I'm thinking, you know, I don't really need to trim it. Since the soap is coming all the way to the top, I can wait until we cut the bars to trim it maybe. Or at least wait until this firms up. That might be better. See? So, I'm just pressing it down, pressing it into the stuff. Maybe I should, you know, maybe I should because I'm afraid it's going to like come up on the edges. Although those get cut off anyway. Let's, let's do it. Let's take the risk and see what happens. I mean, yeah, okay. All right, we survived. Alrighty, and then this side... We'll trim also. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right, so now when we go to slice the bars, I won't be slicing off, like there won't be any wasted soap dough on the sides. Now we gotta get those bees on there. Um, you see a duck head in the little bar right here? Or the, oh, this one, is it right there? Like the beak right here and then the head and the neck. That's all I see. All right, so let me grab a swan. Yes, awesome, I found it. It's like searching, searching for hidden animals. Um, let me grab my little ruler thing and I'll just kind of attempt to remake these lines. I should really put them on in permanent marker, but I don't want to, like, I don't want to mark up my molds, but I mean, it's dumb. I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. Yeah, Stacy has a very good imagination or a very good eye for finding things. Maybe she could, like, professionally play those I spy games where you have to find all these random objects. She could do speed runs. Like, who wants to watch chess when you could watch that? Okay. So here's the one mark that I was able to see. And these two, um, I accidentally wiped off when I was uh, well, I was <laughs> wiping the mold clean. I was, like, making sure that the because there was, like, some mica that stuck on there. And I was like, oh, I'll just wipe this mica off and then Wiped off the lines also. Okay. There we go. Good enough. Now I can kind of vaguely tell what I'm supposed to be doing. All 
All right, so I'm going to take these little bees, and hopefully they're still really soft because I just made them. So these will need to firm up with the rest of the soap, and hopefully there's no extra mica on my fingers or anything. I'm just trying to get it in between those lines to make sure that they don't um, they don't get cut when I cut this open to bars later. I was making these little bees and I was like, oh, this reminds me of something. And I was thinking and thinking and I, <laughs> and I realized there was this time I had made um, soap that had little flies on the top for um, Felicia's, for Felicia. And uh, it was just like that. It was like making these little little flies, except for these are yellow and black instead of white and black. Okay, I think, sorry guys, I was barely in frame. Um, I think they're all, I'm making sure, see, one of the things that to be careful of is where the edge of the mold is here. If it's too far back, yeah, it's right there. They're right at the edge. Let me push them in a little. Because a lot of this overhanging soap here is going to get cleaned off. Okay. And then I'm just going to get this off of here now so that when the soap is made, like when it firms up and I cut it and everything, I won't have this big overhanging lip here because I don't want to damage the bees when I trim it up. So we'll get all that off of here now. This just looks like caramel, honestly in real life, like toffee, or like those Werther's um, caramel candies. That's what this looks like. Okay, there we go. That's better. All right, so now when I go and cut the soaps, I won't have like an overhanging lip that I have to worry about. And I'm just going to kind of round off the corner here so that it's not just this obvious shelf. Okay, that's, that's looking... Oops, I went in too far. That's looking much better already. So I think I better leave it alone now. <laughs> the ink got picked up in the soap batter there. Let me get it off. There we go. Since I don't need it now. Okay. All right. I better just I better just leave this alone. So I don't I don't know. I'll I'll mess with it until it until I do something I shouldn't. All right. I'm just pushing down on the back here to make sure that these pieces are connected completely because some of them got curled up on the edges okay and then just taking off any extra soap batter around the edges here there that way we won't have a bunch of the the there's probably going to be some like overhang but now it won't be so dramatic and uh, it won't look as messy okay so i think I think I better stop messing with it. It's the bee's knees, exactly. Caramel candle burning. That's all you smell looking at the soap? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is definitely very caramely looking. And actually, the smell is not that far off from caramel. Um, you know, there's definitely similarities there. The sweetness and, like, you know how caramel has a warm smell to it? This has that same warm smell. So what I'm doing now is debating if I want to put any like gold on this, like gold dust or something. I kind of don't. But then part of me thinks that might be cute. I don't know. I kind of like it like this. Stop fiddling. Okay, okay. <laughs> now I think it's just right. Yeah, I think I think I better stop because I'll, I'll find I'll find stuff. I'll find something. Oh, you know what we should do? I almost forgot. We have all this extra is extra gold or um, honeycomb. Let's, let's stick it on here. No reason to waste it. Oh, good. I got it just in time. I, <laughs> it feels really firm under there. I think we got it just in time. So there's that. And this on this side. Now the duck head has yellow wings. Or something. Or a yellow body. Okay, I'm trying to push it into the side so that it, it's flush. 
so it kind of matches the curve of the soap a little better. And then we'll just push it down into the soap like that. And on this side, so that it's not sticking up there. There we go. Get all this pushed down into the soap. Okay, there. All right. Don't cover the swan. No. <laughs> Is it still there? Oh, I put it on the wrong side, didn't I? I think I did. I think I did it wrong. It's because the... Yeah, this... For whatever reason, they make this mirror image sometimes. And so I was like, oh, the swan is on this side. No, I got it on the wrong side. Oh, well. Welp, that's what I get. I hear I was thinking I was making it better, and I covered this one. Oh, well. But we got the honeycomb in there, so that's good. Oh, look, there's a little piece of honeycomb left. We'll put that little piece in here. See if I can get it in without dropping it. Yay. All right. There we go. Okay, so we got to put these in the oven now. It's probably... Huh. With all that honey, I'm wondering if maybe it would be smarter... I don't know. I want it to gel, though. That's the thing. The problem is the, the heat from all this, it's probably going to cause it to crack. But I think if maybe I don't leave it in there as long, or... Um, maybe don't make the oven as warm. It might be okay. Yeah, I covered the beak. Yeah, I figured. After I looked at it, I realized what I had done. I had done it wrong. I'm going to get my gloves off and my face shield off. So, the next soap is going to be the lemongrass. And I'll post, um, a, whatchamacallit, a poll so you guys can vote on how we should make the lemongrass soap. And also, if you guys would like to see me make the lip balms, I could possibly do that during a live. That's a little more difficult just because the um, lip balm solidifies really, really fast. Um, so basically, once I start, it's just like the soap. Once I start, I can't stop until everything is filled. Yeah, Francis was asking, I think, yeah. Yeah, it was. Okay, I thought so. Um, oh, yeah, let me show you a little closer up. So that's how those look. But if you guys would like to see me make the lip balm, um, let me know. Uh, maybe, I could, maybe I could do a, a poll on that. Because I'm thinking we could possibly do it in the same video as the lemongrass, possibly. Um, also... Uh, Francis, when we do the poll for the lemongrass design, go ahead and vote on it and then leave a comment with the color or colors you'd want to see in it. And give me a, an idea. So when you see the poll, just comment on it there and I will uh, do my best to make the colors correct. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to see the lip balm making, I can do that. The ones that I already made are the French vanilla flavor. So I'm thinking I can make maybe a few more of those or maybe make. Um, I know some people wanted to see the green apple. So maybe we could do that. <laughs> the, the bees need some googly eyes. They do. I need to find some really small ones and stick them on there. I wonder if... Look how firm that is already. Look, it's like solid. I wonder if there's a way of making them out of soap, but you'd need to have a clear film on top. I think, I don't know. But it would be so cute. Alrighty, guys. I'm going to go put this in the oven and take my chances. Because we got to make sure it gels. So I will get that done. And then um, when you see the poll, just make sure to vote on which, um, which version of the lemongrass you'd like to see. And then if you guys do want to see the lip balm, like I said, I'll probably post another poll for that later um, and see if we could do those on camera too, because that would be a lot of fun. And um, I hope you guys have a great week and that you had a great weekend. I will see you guys all soon. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. It was a great, uh, great live. So see you guys soon.